Our Father, we thank you very much for our meeting tonight. Thank you for your children. Thank you for the service that you have given every one of us to render. We are praying, O oh Lord, you increase our wisdom, increase our faith, increase our understanding as we serve you from day to day, from week to week, in Jesus' name. We are praying that these things we are studying and reading will have real impact and influence upon our lives and upon our ministry so that at the end of the day we'll have well done thou faithful and good servants enter into thy joy on the final day in jesus name open eyes of understanding tonight again in jesus name we pray while you are receiving the outlines i want to remind you that we are in joshua chapter 2 we have already learned about the two spies that Joshua sent out in Joshua chapter 2, verse 1 and verse 23. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And then in verse 23, So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them, all things that happened unto them. First of all, we have already seen the wisdom of Joshua, that he sent out these two spies, because Moses had done that earlier, before him. Moses sent out twelve, he sent out two. And I told you when we studied the first seven verses, that he did that because he wanted them to search out just the city. In the case of Moses, they were to search out the land. Another reason would be that when those 12 spies went out, only two of them were actually faithful. And then Joshua sent out just two that will be faithful, that will be able to bring back a good report unto him. We learned a few things concerning these two spies that went out. Number one is the wisdom. You look before you leave. You don't just rush into action. There is something to be done, and it's to be done to the glory of God. We need wisdom that all the information we need will get, will search, so that we'll be well equipped to do everything that we need to do. Not only that, it's sent out to you. Because these two will be able to complement their efforts. They'll be able to support one another, encourage one another, and even correct one another if one is going wrong. And this will not be the first time that two people are used like that. You remember in the Bible, Moses and Aaron. You remember Joshua and Caleb. You remember Elijah and Elisha. And as you come on to the New Testament, you have Peter and John. You have uh, Barnabas uh, and Saul. And then when Jesus sent out uh, the disciples to evangelize, he sent them out two by two. And it is uh, also possible today. In fact, there are times we have done that. We send out people to carry out some work. And then we send out sometimes two, sometimes four, sometimes more than that. Like-minded people. They will be able to best carry out the work. They will be consecrated to the work too. Don't you learn another thing in the passage you are looking at? That God works on both sides of the line. He sent out the two people. And then Rahab was there. All the information they needed, they got from Rahab. And uh, God is still doing the same thing today. He works on both sides of the line. In the area of marriage, he's speaking to the man. He'll be speaking to the woman as well. You say the Lord has called you for the ministry. As the Lord is speaking to you, he's also speaking in the minds and the hearts of the leadership as well. God spoke to Samuel, and God spoke also to Saul, or directed Saul to meet him. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch? On, the, on his side, the Lord was leading him reading the scriptures. On the side of Philip, the Lord was leading him to you, that you'll direct him just to that place where he was. Cornelius and Peter, the same thing you'll find. And so it is still the same thing today. God's leading, God's will is verifiable. The Lord works on both sides of the line. And then what we also learn is that these two spies were sent out 
You know what they were told to do? Search out the land. Survey the land. Bring back information that they did. And if they had stopped there, they would have made 100%. But they went beyond what they were sent to do. That is, they achieved more than they were actually told to do. They brought Rahab unto salvation. They brought the whole household unto salvation. And then they even brought this Rahab eventually unto the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means the Lord used them that they will accomplish much more than they were sent out eventually, originally to achieve. When your ministry pleases the Lord, the Lord can use you to accomplish not only what you originally aimed at achieving, He can use you to achieve more than you were originally commissioned to do. We're looking at three points as we consider the message of today. The message is titled, Assurance of Victory. Fear within the enemy's strongholds. The assurance of victory. The Lord had already said, no man will be able to stand before them. And now the assurance was coming because we were getting some real information from the very center and the heart of the enemy territory. Fear within the enemy's stronghold. There are three points we are going to consider. Number one, confession and conviction produced by supernatural signs. Number two, condition of our security and salvation. Number three is the confirmation of ultimate subjection of all strongholds. Number one is the confession and the conviction that is produced by supernatural signs. We're now in Joshua chapter 2. We're reading from verse 8. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land. For your terror is falling upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land do faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you, when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites, that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven and in the earth beneath. Let's stop there for a moment. Here we find that uh, the spies, uh, they come to the right place. You know that uh, God has led a man or God has led the man. When you see the result of the actions they are taking. The action had led them to the right place. And then the woman was telling them now. Telling them the condition of the whole city. The condition of the whole land. In fact that's exactly what they were looking for. They were sent out to survey and spy the land. So that they will know the might of the people. The height of the people. The strength of the people. The preparedness of the people. And maybe the way they were preparing for war against the children of Israel. And now he, she was telling them, she said, we know. In fact, she said, I personally know that the Lord has given you the land. What an encouraging information that they heard exactly what they wanted to know. And then she said, it is not only that I know that your terror is falling upon us. And then all the inhabitants of the land, they do fade just because of you. Those are the things that these spies heard. And they already knew that what the Lord had promised, he had already now begun to work upon. And uh, that kind of uh, information will infuse courage into them. And it is good for us to know as well that in the battles of life, the people that maybe you are afraid of and you are a little bit very slow, before you eventually take action, if you really know what was going on, if you knew what was going on in their camp, you will know that they are saying the same thing that Rehab is saying. They know that the Lord has called you. The Lord has given you the land. The Lord has given you the promise. And the Lord is going to make you have the victory. And victory like they had, we are going to have and you are going to have in Jesus' name. But it's exactly what happened to other people too, not only the people of Jericho. Look at chapter 5 and in verse 1. 
it says it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites that were on the side on the side of Jordan westward and all the kings of the Canaanites which were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we passed over that their heart melted neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel what a reassurance that uh, Rahab said so, that in the city of Jericho there was no problem at all. The hearts of everyone melted. And here we're told again that all the kings on that side, Canaan, that all of them, their hearts did melt because of these children of Israel. What did Rahab say made their hearts to melt? Come back to Joshua chapter 2. Reading from verse 10. It says, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you. Let's stop there for a moment. We have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you. I want to remind you that, that uh, the waters of the Red Sea were dried up. How many years before this time? I said how many years before this time? 40 years before this time. And yet the information was still making them to be afraid. You know something with the children of God? We who are children of God always say that miracle took place four years ago. And it doesn't have any effect upon us anymore. Or we say, yes, I heard about that testimony. In fact, I was in the church when that sister gave the testimony. But you know what? It took place ten years ago. And because it took place ten years ago, it loses its value in the mind of the children of God. In fact, if we are towards the children of Israel at this time, how many of them still had great faith in God? How many of them still believed they were going to get into the land of Canaan just because of that miracle that happened 40 years before that time? That's exactly the miracle they heard about. And they said, even though it happened 40 years ago, it's still fresh in our mind. And just because of that, we're still afraid of you. And we know that the Lord had given you the land. And uh, Moses had said that, even at that time, look at Exodus. Exodus chapter 15, reading there from verse 14. He had told the children of Israel that exactly will be the result and the consequence of that miracle that happened. In Exodus chapter 15 and in verse 14, the people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on them and then on the inhabitants of Palestine. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them. And all the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. It's something wonderful as you read those words of Moses. Moses had said that 40 years before. You know, when God is sending a man to give you a message, it doesn't ma matter how long that message might have been four years ago, 40 years ago, even 100 years ago. It is still fresh today and it still has power today because that word is the word of the eternal God. In fact, in verse 16, it says, Fear and dread shall fall upon them. And by the greatness, by the greatness of thine arm, they shall be as steel as a stone. Till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. Let's understand then that when the Lord has done something, we should talk about it. And he tells us then what an encouragement for us. All the testimonies we had in the past, you still share them with your neighbors, share them with your co-workers, and let it bring forth faith in them as well as fear in them. In Joshua chapter 2, Joshua chapter 2, still looking at the confession and the conviction of this uh, woman, Rahab, in the middle of verse 10, and then it says, And what she did unto the two kings of the Amorites, uh, that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. If you check up in Deuteronomy, that took place just before they entered into the land of Canaan. And he said, we heard of the one that took place 40 years ago. We heard of the one that just took place very recently. And the past one and the present one joined together, brought fear in our heart. And then in verse 11 it says, and as soon as we have heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither was there any more courage, any more strength, 
uh, in any man because of you for the lord your god he is god in heaven above and he is god on earth beneath that's the testimony that uh, that she was sharing with them that we believe that this is what God will do. The Lord is going to give you the land because we know that uh, he has done great things and he has promised you great things. Now we have a lot of things uh, to learn from that. Uh, the sinner's fear should be the saint's faith. That is, when there is fear in the enemy camp, when there is fear in the hearts of the people that do not know God, that should bring up faith in your heart. Already the people who are unbelievers, they are already confessing. We know that your God is great. Your God is a miracle worker. Your God can do anything. and God, Your God can do everything. We are hearing testimony. And the testimonies are seeping through. And they are coming through. They are filtering through. And we know that because of what God has done in the past, your God is very great. He's the God of the whole earth and a God in heaven. And it should bring courage. It should bring fortitude. It should bring steadfastness in the hearts of the people of God. And I need to tell you already, there is trembling in the enemy's camp in Jesus' name. The hosts of Satan, they are afraid of you already. If you are trembling for them, it's because you don't know what's in their heart. There is no time for me to go through the scriptures with you. There was a time that Gideon was called to do something. And then he was being afraid. He didn't know that he could do nothing. And the Lord said, Gideon, if you are afraid, get near there and hear what they are telling, the stories they are telling in the enemy camp. And then he went there with his uh, servant. And then he had them telling about a dream. And somebody interpreted and said, this is nothing else but the sword of Gideon. Even in the enemy camp, before Gideon took his step to go out, they knew that Gideon was going to win the battle. Do you remember Jonathan? Jonathan and called his own servant and said these people let us see let us go to the other side because it is not a problem with god he can save with many he can save with few if they say come on we'll show you a thing then we know it's a sign for us that the lord has given them to us and then he crawled on the sand and he got over there and he said see these are the israelites coming and one of them said come we'll show you a thing and then he said my servant didn't I tell you god has given them to us and when he got to the the other side they turned against one another they began to kill one another in the enemy camp your enemies are confused already there is fear in their hearts already all you need to do is to be praising the lord because the lord has given you the land already you will have it and you will possess it in jesus name we go to point number two condition of our security in salvation the condition of our security in salvation i read from verse 12 and now therefore i pray you swear unto me by the lord since i have showed you kindness that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token and ye shall save alive my father my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death do you see here she knew the lord but the knowledge of the lord was not enough she wanted salvation the knowledge of the scripture the knowledge of the power of god should lead us unto the salvation of the lord not only that she wanted salvation for herself that she wanted salvation for her father and for her mother and brothers and sisters and all that they have in her own case you remember you do see her, she didn't mention husband why because she was what her lord she didn't mention children why because she was her lord but the point is this if god can save that her lord god will save any sinner whosoever will come to the lord the lord will forgive them and the lord will save them in jesus name but then she was concerned for the salvation of others when we are saved and we come to the lord we shall be concerned for the salvation of our household the salvation of our relatives and the salvation of all the people relatives that are attached unto them as well that they will deliver you will deliver our lives from death in verse 14 and the man answered her our life for your life if ye utter not our business i want you to pick up that word if if our life for your life that means salvation for you security for you if on condition you do not utter this our business if you're able to shut your mouth control your tongue 
if you are able to live and behave in a new life now, if you know anything about a harlot, about prostitutes, about people that are loose and free with women, that was a major point, a major problem, a major problem of talking and talking and talking. We, we, we normally talk about the talking and the loose talking of something, but you must also understand, as loose as something was, Delilah was as loose as well, because it takes two uh, to be telling all that kind of tale, uh, to be talking and talking and talking. And he said, there's going to be a change. There's going to be a transformation. If this salvation is going to be real, if you are going to keep this salvation, you will have to control the, the, the most uh, important and the most active part of your body, which is your tongue that you have been using for all this time, telling tales and telling stories. If you will not utter this our business. Now, I want to make use of that word if. And that what if you'll find in many passages of scripture, we don't have time to read everything, but look at Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24, reading there in verse 20. In fact, the word starts the verse, if ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you utter. He has done you good. Joshua said salvation is conditional. Security is conditional. That you remain with the Lord and in the goodness of the Lord is conditional. There is an Eve. And then when uh, David was talking to his own son, he said in First Chronicles chapter 28, First Chronicles chapter 28, there in verse 9, And thou Solomon, my son, know the God of thy father. Know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart, and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts, and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. Here is the word again. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Do you know, the security if, is only when we abide. We abide in the Lord. We remain in the Lord. That's when the favor of the Lord will remain with us. And those uh, spies, even though it was a short time, even though they had to do everything very urgently and get out of that land before they were discovered, they were careful, they were thorough about the covenant they were striking with that woman. Yes, salvation is available for you, Rahab. Salvation is available for your household and for the household of your father, your mother, and all those people. There is a condition, though, if. And then in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 15, Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 2. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if, that's the word again, if ye seek him, he'll be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will also forsake you. We come on to the New Testament in Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, we will see that salvation, uh, the security in salvation is conditional. In Romans chapter 11, verse 22. Romans eleven twenty-two. 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God to them which fell severity, but toward the goodness, if, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. You see, when we are born again, we will not live careless lives. We, we will abide in the Lord, abide in the word of the Lord, we will abide in Christ, and we allow the word of God to abide in us. Why? Because security and salvation contains an Eve. An Eve. There is an Eve that always follows us if we abide in him, if we abide in his word, if we abide in our commitment and consecration to the Lord, then we remain secured in the salvation of the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6. But Christ, as his son, over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. It is when we hold it fast, even to the end, that is when we are secured in salvation. And there is no allowance for sin. There is no allowance for evil. There is no allowance for iniquity. There is no allowance for all the old life as we fashioned ourselves and the laws of the old life to continue. There is an if, if we continue in the grace of God, then we'll be secured in salvation. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ. This is what again, if we hold 
the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. And Jesus, when he was talking to the people that believed on him, in John chapter 8, John chapter 8, reading from verse 13, and he spake, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then Jesus said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Here is the word again, if. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And so we find these two men. Please come back to Joshua. In Joshua chapter, Joshua chapter 2, we find these men telling the woman that there is a condition. And then it goes on now in uh, verse 15. Then she let them down by a cord through the window. For her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And uh, she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days, until the, until the pursuers be returned. And afterward, ye may go your way. Actually, she actually made herself now part of the people of God. She had believed in the Lord. She had turned away from her sin. And it doesn't need to take a long time. Uh, she had had her faith in the God of Israel because she said there is a conviction in me and there is a confidence in me and I put my confidence in that God of Israel and his God in heaven and his God on the earth beneath and she was now as acting as a member of the family of God as a member of the commonwealth of Israel taking care of them and telling them make sure that you don't get into any danger you will hide yourself in the mountain and then after these day, three days when the pursuers when they have returned afterward then you will take your journey and then verse 17 and the men said unto her we will be blameless of this nine oath which thou hast made us swear behold when we come into the land thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window uh, which thou didst let us down by wait a minute when it says scarlet thread was a what was the color of the scarlet thread red and you remember now you remember israel you remember Exodus chapter 12? In Exodus chapter 12, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. What's the color of blood? Red. The color of the scarlet thread? Red. They said, although we cannot kill an animal now, this is enough for a symbol. And uh, there's no time to go through all the scriptures, but uh, you might say, why are they substituting? A scarlet thread for the blood of the lamb. Well, it's not a new thing. If you read Genesis, you'll find that when uh, uh, twins were to be born, the one that was to first come out, because it was to be in the lineage of the Messiah, they tied it, a, 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 a red a scarlet thread on the finger, but he pulled the finger back again, and then the first one came out, and then the second one. And as you go to read in Matthew, you will find the name of one of those uh, twins, you'll find in the lineage of the Messiah and still it is still the same scripture and they wanted to see that red thread the symbol of the blood of the lamb and it is like as they were saved that the angel when the angel saw the blood the death a penalty passed over us and we are going to come to the land and the lord is going to give us the land and the jericho walls are going to fall down but you are not going to be destroyed when that red sin symbolizing the blood of atonement when it is seen then it will, will pass over you and you will not die therefore you bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou hast let us down by thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all the father's house home unto thee you must remember that night when they slew the pascal lamb and as they slew that pascal lamb the lord said you will stay inside anyone that comes out his blood will be upon him but when the blood is applied every one of you will stay there it means that these two spies that were sent out they were not novices they were not newcomers. They were the people that knew scriptures very well. And they knew the word of God very well. And they remember the time of their own redemption. And what had taken place at their own time. The same thing was going to take place here. And then it goes on in verse 19. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street his blood shall be upon a set and will be guiltless and whosoever shall be with thee in the house and his blood shall be upon our head if any hand be upon him there is one side god's sovereignty there is the other side man's responsibility god plans salvation 
Jesus Christ gave himself for salvation. And the Holy Ghost is ministry to every sinner, convicting the sinner, drawing the heart of the sinner to himself. But the sinner's responsibility is still to obey the watch of the Lord. Whosoever will let him come unto me. Not only that, let him abide in the face and abide in the Lord. God has his part to play. We have a part to play. You'll find that in every blessing of the Lord. God gives a promise. He gives a prophecy. And is able to perform all that he has said. But we men and women, we have our own part to play. And what he has told us to do, we have to do. And when your obedience matches the commandment of the Lord. When your response matches the order of the Lord. When, you, when your practice matches the promise of the Lord, then he will fulfill Feel what he has said that he will do. And then in verse 20, and if thou alter. This our business. They use the word if again. They emphasize it again. If you alter this our business, then we will be quit, we will be free of thine oath which thou hast made us to swear. And she and she said, according unto your words, so be it. You know, in salvation, we don't argue with the conditions of salvation. If you find anybody saying, I don't like that condition of salvation. You have to repent. You have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you argue with the terms and condition of salvation, you never get saved. We don't argue with the condition of sanctification. You have to consecrate. You have to desire. You have to pray and you have to manifest faith. If we argue with the condition and the terms of sanctification, we never get sanctified. We don't argue with the condition of getting to heaven. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. If we argue with the condition that God has laid down will never make it. She didn't argue. It says, according to thy word, to your word, so be it. And she sent them away. And she departed and she bound the scarlet line in the window. She did it immediately. And that's what we're learning. That if we too, if we're going to have the blessings of the Lord, the conditions are there. And we are going to fulfill the condition. The grace of God is sufficient. We will fulfill necessary conditions in Jesus' name. Now, the two spies, they eventually came back. That leads us now to point number three. Confirmation of the ultimate subjection of all strong holes. Uh, that subtitle alone, it has a meaning and I pray it will have a meaning in your life. All strongholds in your life, in your family, will be subjected in Jesus' name. Now look at the testimony of the two spies as they came back in verse 22. And they went and came unto the mountain and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned. Now, isn't that patience? And the woman had said, three days, please abide and stay in the mountain before you will uh, continue your journey. And uh, you know that uh, they had had a good result. It was a good thing. They must have been very eager to get back to Joshua and tell him all that they had seen. You know, sometimes in our excitement, we become impatient. We're so happy. We're so joyful. It's never been as good like this. And because of the exciting message we have, we must tell it and we must give it out right now. There is still time. There is still need for patience. They were patient until the pursuers had returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. In verse 23, so the two men returned. Their lives were secured. When God has sent you to do something, and you are in the path of duty, your life will be secured in Jesus' name. Nothing bad can happen to you. Nothing evil will happen to you until everything that God has sent you to accomplish, until you accomplish everything in Jesus' name. And then it says, they descended from the mountain, and they passed over, and they came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them, that is all things that happened unto them. And he said unto Joshua, truly, without any shadow of doubt, the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land, even all the inhabitants of the country, do faint because of us. Before I pass a comment on this area, and before we look at the subjection of all the strongholds of the enemy, hey, look at this, I told you earlier, that they actually accomplished much more than they were sent to accomplish. We have seen the salvation of Rahab and the salvation of our household. We have seen how the Lord kept them, but now they said the Lord truly, the Lord has delivered unto our hands all the land. 
you were not sent out to go and spy out all the land. Only Jericho. Yes. The Lord so prospered our journey that he increased our victory. He increased our conquest. That even though we were sent to a limited area of just the city, we even had revelation and vision concerning the whole land. Even all the inhabitants of the country, not only of the city of Jericho, they do faint because of us. You know, when your heart is right with God, and when you are in the pathway of duty, and uh, you do everything that the Lord wants you to do, you'll be able to come back, and you'll be able to have a good testimony before we finish. Uh, let's compare these two spies, faithful spies, and then the spies in Numbers chapter 13. You read the references yourself, but let's compare them. Number one, the faithful spies, they reported back to the leader. They came to Joshua, and they told just Joshua, uh, the report, the good report, but the other spies that were unfaithful, they reported to the congregation. The congregation are not mature, they are not mature enough. There are babies among them. There are fearful people among them. Timid people among them. When you are sent out like that, do like the faithful spies and bring your report just only to the leader. Number two, they had positive report that uh, made the people courageous and they themselves they manifested courage. On the side of those other spies, some faithful spies, they had negative reports of the cowardly. And you examine yourself when you are sent out to bring, a, you know, to spout something, survey something, find out some information. How do you put your message? How do you put your, uh, your report that you are bringing back? Is it positive like this to you or is it negative? Number three, they walked by faith and they demonstrated confidence in God demonstrated confidence in God. The other people that brought evil reports, they walked by side. They demonstrated, they manifested unbelief that spread discouragement in the congregation. Number four, they were united in their testimonial report. The two of them, there was no disagreement or discord. They were united in their report. But the other twelve, two was on this, were on this side, and ten on the other side. There was disunity and discord in the team. Number five, they said nothing about the high walls. They said nothing about the strength of the enemy. They said, there's nothing to say about that. The enemies, they are bread for us. Why talk about them? The witches and the wizards, why talk about them? You know, when the leader in the church, in a local church, when he talks everything about the witches, everything about the, about the wizards, everything about the familiar spirits, everything about the power of the enemy, every message contains something to say about those forces of darkness until we come out of the church and we're all trembling and the young people in that church, they're going out of the church. I don't know when the witches will catch me. I don't know when the wizards will catch me. I don't know when the familiar spirits will catch me. I don't know whether women rep is a wizard is a witch i don't know whether our uh, uh, student rep is this or that when you bring an evil report everything you are talking about the strength of the enemy the power of the enemy the forces of darkness not these two people these two people they're only going to talk about the lord truly the lord has delivered into our hands the land and then they said even all the inhabitants of the country they faint because of us why don't you assure the people of god the enemy camp they are trembling because of us i said they are trembling because of us that's the information where to give them number six these faithful spies they confirmed they confirmed god's promise they said it's exactly as the lord has said it we found it the other ten spies what we find in them they contradicted god's word god said yes they said no god said move they said retired and come back god said march forward they said no we cannot god said you are able they said we're just grass uppers in our own side they were very negative and they contradicted the word of god number number seven uh, they, 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 they strengthened the leadership when joshua had what he said he was strengthened and then you find out look at chapter 3 verse 1 and joshua rose early in the morning and they removed from shitting that's the result of the, of the testimony of those spies. They encourage and strengthen the hands of leadership. In the, in, on the side of the other people, they weaken God's people. When they finish bringing their report, and they said, we saw the sons of the Anakims there. We saw the giants there. We cannot. They will destroy us. The high walls are there. We are grasshoppers and they are giants. The children of Israel, they began to cry. They began to weep. These faithful spies, they left the decision in the hand of the leader to take. 
They said you sent us out to find information. We got the information. The final decision rests in your hand. But you know the ten spies, they came back, they said, we're taking the decision for the leadership. They took the decision and they said, we cannot go out. In fact, as a result of what they said, the children of Israel, they wanted to make another captain for themselves and return back to Egypt. But then, number nine, they contributed positively uh, to Israel's positive forward march. That is the two spies. They contributed to the forward march and the forward move and the progress of the people of God. In the case of the other ten spies, they caused Israel to draw back. When you are given some assignment like that, and you know that the report you bring back will affect the whole congregation, will affect the forward march, will affect the progress of the people of God, you will think, you will meditate, you will put the information in a positive way so that the people of God will be able to march forward as a result of the things you are telling us. Now, as we conclude, I want to tell you that all the strongholds in our lives, all the strongholds in our local churches, all the strongholds in the church as a whole, all the strongholds against your family, already they are scattered in Jesus' name. I want you to see, we're coming back now to what Rehab said, and I want you to see how the Lord has prepared the way in Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23, verse 27. I will send my fear before you. And will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. I will make all thine enemies to turn their back unto thee. I will send on it bees before thee. Which shall drive out the Hittites and the Canaanites and the Hivites from before thee. It shall be so in Jesus name. I will not drive them out before thee in one year. That means if you met anyone today that is uh, witches or wizards or whatever it is, the Lord will send the fear before you. They will be trembling before you get there. And as you look directly at their faces, they will be afraid of you and they will run away from you in Jesus' name. If they meet you in the dream, they will run. If they meet you during the day, they will run. If it's in the market, they will run. Anywhere they meet you, they will run in Jesus' name. In Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 25. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole of heaven. Who shall hear the report of thee and they shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. They will be afraid. I said they will be afraid. You will not be afraid of them anymore. Don't you understand? Greater is he that's in you than, than he that's in the world. And don't you understand? The armies of heaven, the chariots of heaven, the chariots of fire, they are all around you. And you will not be afraid. They will be afraid of you. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 20 verse 21. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the honey the bee among them until they that are led and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them. I said thou shalt not be affrighted at them. For the Lord thy God is among you a mighty God and uh, terrible. Chapter 11 of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and in verse 25. Deuteronomy 11 verse 25. There shall not be, there shall no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God, he shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that he shall tread upon. As he has said unto you. From tonight, we are not afraid of them again. You are not afraid of them again. The witches and the wizards, they cannot pull off even one hair out of your head in Jesus name. They cannot touch your children. They cannot touch your wife. They cannot touch your husband. Already, you will not be afraid of them. Have faith in God. Everything will be alright. I said have faith in God. Everything will be alright. All the strongholds, everything will come down. All the enemies, they will be ashamed. All sicknesses, they will be taken away. The fear in you will vanish away. You have strong faith in the Lord. The fear now has been transferred to the heart of your enemies. Rise up and let us talk to the Lord. We are not afraid of those enemies anymore. You are not afraid of the witches and the wizards anymore. The Lord is on your side. The Lord is on your side. He will send the hornets before you. He will send the bees before you. He will send uh, all his armies before you. You will overcome. You will overcome. You will overcome. The Lord is on your side. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Don't be afraid of sickness. Don't be afraid of the affliction. 
Don't be afraid of all those things that the enemies are bragging about. You will overcome. You will overcome. You have overcome already. Develop faith in your own heart. Develop faith in the hearts of the children of God. We who are leaders in the local church in the district. Talk about the power of our God. Talk about the goodness of our God. Don't instill fear of witches and wizards in the hearts of the children of God. The Canaanites are nothing. The Perizzites are nothing. The Hivites are nothing. The Jebusites are nothing. Their charms, their idols are nothing. We know our God. We know what He can do. Our God is still on the throne. Encourage the pregnant women. Encourage the new couples. Encourage our brethren. Encourage the children of God. There is nothing under the sun to be afraid of. Leaders, preachers, pastors, encourage your people. The Lord will see them through. The Lord will overcome for them. There are strongholds and the strongholds of the enemy will be totally destroyed and demolished. They are more than conquerors. They are more than conquerors. And you yourself, you are more than a conqueror. There's a wall of fire around you. There is protection around you. The Lord is on your side. You will not be moved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's pray together. And you promise the Lord you are going to stand unwaveringly on the word of God. Your life is precious in the sight of the Lord. That district where you are, the local church where you are, he has called you to do something. You will do it. The Canaanites will not hinder you. The Jebusites will not hinder you. Jericho walls will fall before you in Jesus' name. All those stories you have heard about witches and wizards, they are not the complete story. Our God is on the throne. You are more than a conqueror already. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of what we have learned today. We know that you have given your children the victory. And victory is ours in Jesus' name. I pray for all our brothers and sisters who are present here tonight. And all those who will be hearing this over the cassette. Oh Lord, I pray, the strongholds of the enemy against their lives, against their spiritual life, against their family life, against their business life, all those strongholds will crumble in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit has come before us to search out the land. And he has come to give us information that the people of Jericho, they are afraid of the children of God. All the strongholds of the enemy, they are afraid because of the children of God. There is nothing in that camp that is going to make them succeed, that is going to make them to overcome us. We are overcomers already in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray for all my brothers and sisters tonight. Anyone that is uh, being afflicted, anyone that the strongholds are still shouting and they are still bragging and boasting, oh Lord, I pray. All those parts of darkness, all those parts of the enemy, all those parts of the Canaanites and the Jebusites, everything will crumble in Jesus' name. Anybody here having fear? Lord, I pray the fear will come out now. And the fear will be transferred into the hearts of their enemies in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, according to your promise which will never fail. I pray, O oh Lord, dredge and fear and terror will come into the hearts of the enemies of your people in Jesus' name. I pray for your children that have been afraid. I pray to sleep at night. I pray to go to the market. I pray to go to the offices. I pray to go to their village. I pray to go to this and to go to that. Oh Lord, I pray every form of fear in them, drive it out in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you plant faith in them. You plant courage in them. Make them steadfast in Jesus' name. 
Every sickness that the fear has cracked the wall of their face, and then sickness has come in, affliction has come in, barrenness has come in, poverty has come in, lack of progress has come in. All those things that came in were fear. I command, come out in Jesus' name. Strengthen your people, encourage your people, lift up your people. I pray, Lord, as we go back home, on the road, there is protection. In the home, there is protection. All those little, little girls and little, little boys anywhere that has been uh, using anything, making your people afraid before, I pray that terror will seize their hearts now in Jesus' name. I pray that your people here will rise up like a mighty army. And nobody will be able to defeat them. The spies came back, they said, Truly, the Lord has given us a land. I will repeat it truly, the Lord has given us this city. The Lord has given us this state. The Lord has given us this country. And this continent of Africa, the Lord has given unto us. We shall possess in Jesus' name. I pray that everyone here, brother and sister, will be more than a conqueror. We will overcome. We have overcome already. Manifest it in every life, O oh Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, we thank the Lord for the opportunity of the combined service again. So our brother in the front, please come over and take the combined service program sheet so that we can distribute to all of us before we go. Please, as we continue the distribution, let's listen to how the combined service arrangement is. September 12th, Agege, Alimansho, Ikeja, Oshodi, English only. September 19th, Isolo, English, and Yoruba from all the districts. September 26th, Bagada, Shomolu, Ketu, Mushin, English only. October 3rd, Ajegole, Orile Gamu, English, and all the languages except Yoruba. October 10th, Festak, Lagos Island, Sulere, Yaba, English, only. Please, let's take note that early arrival for Saturday scripture is very important. Missing Saturday scripture every Sunday weakens the Christian and eventually will weaken the church. Let us do everything possible to be punctual every Sunday. So, September 12th, our brethren, Agege Alima Shoi Keja Oshodi. Please don't forget, let's pass it across to all our brethren in the district, and let's get here before the time of the service. Each service starts at 7.30 a.m. Please, let's be punctual. Please, let's be fast in the distribution. If you have not got, you can please raise up your hands so that we can see you. If you have not got the combined service Amen. Sheet, please raise up your hand very well so that I can see you. There are many hands towards the back at the auditorium opposite the pulpit, former student auditorium. <laughs> 